Well, <laughs> who's going to save the earth now? Raise your hand if you want. Okay, uh, that was a very pretty film and a little doomful. <laughs> but what's more inspiring than doom? Not much, right? Christian super right? <laughs> um, your next ta uh, speaker is uh, one, he's amazing at the ukulele, and two, he is also the CEO of Rocket Hub, one of the top crowdfunding uh, websites. Crowd, not crown. That's the British government. Crowdfunding websites uh, around. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Meese. All right. Good morning, y'all. Um, my name's Brian Meese. And I am one of the co-founders and CEO of Rocket Hub. And I'm really excited and grateful to be here. So thank you to TEDx for inviting me to speak. And thank you to Brooklyn Bowl for hosting us. And thank all of y'all in attendance. Um, New York City is a very busy place and you have a lot of options. And you're spending your time with us this morning. And we're very grateful for that. And for the folks in cyberspace, we're grateful for y'all as well. Um, what I'm going to talk about this morning is really exciting. And we're kind of unleashing this information here kind of for the first time. Um, so we're really, you know, folks here are going to kind of get a first look at what we're doing in the world of crowdsourced funds for scientific projects. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, uh, the motif we're going to be using here this morning. And how we believe that uh, this may be a better um, funding model for seed stage science projects. So... As most of y'all know, you know, crowdfunding in the world of arts um, and creative media is, um, is, is very popular. It's skyrocketing in popularity. Uh, filmmakers, musicians, um, artists, basically reaching out to their communities to raise funds to make things happen. Why? Because the other industries that uh, used to kind of support these things are kind of collapsing, and traditional funding is hard to get. Um, so this crowdfunding model, the idea of crowdsourced funds, of course, is very intriguing to us since we're a platform that does that. But we are also very curious to see where else could this model hold up. Um, and we decided to take it to some different spaces, um, notably the academic and science space. So over the summer, we teamed up with about 50 scientists from around the world um, and hosted what's called the SciFund Challenge. And each of these scientists are spearheading their own campaigns. Um, often they're backed by top institutions. Um, and they're really uh, passionate and um, sharing the stories of what they're doing, uh, why they're doing it, um, and raising funds in the process that's happening actually as we speak. And the results are, are, pretty, are pretty stellar. Um, we see this idea of crowdfunding, just to kind of talk a little bit about it, uh, 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 on a high level here, um, as being a, a new m model for patronage. Um, back, in, uh, you know, back in the day here, um, da Vinci relied on a handful of wealthy patrons to not only pay his bills, but to also fuel his, his scientific endeavors. And what we're finding now are that uh, scientists through social media and through their own networks have the ability for massive outreach. So we see this idea of crowdfunding really being um, mass patronage. And it's important to note this is different from um, a donation. It's different um, from an investment vehicle. Um, it's not a, an e-commerce play. We really see crowdfunding as an online event that harnesses networks, communities, crowds for funding, awareness, and feedback um, for projects. Um, and like I mentioned, it's not a, a loan vehicle, it's not an equity vehicle, um, it's a real participatory model um, that we're really excited about um, with what it's doing in the world of, of academics and science. And the social rituals um, involved with giving, project, giving to, to projects and to, to organizations, it, they started offline. And what happened is they migrated online in a pretty big and massive uh, way, especially with uh, the idea of rewards coming in and relationships being built out um, around these campaigns. And what's really exciting to us 
um, is for the first time really uh, in human history, uh, the common man or woman has the ability to fund science. It's never really happened before this way. Um, science is typically funded through governments, endowments, uh, maybe really, really, really wealthy people, but now the common man or woman has the ability to fund science and academics. And it's working. It's actually working pretty well. So we launched um, 49 projects, um, all scientific-based, on November 1st as part of the sci Fund Challenge. And within 24 hours, they had all raised funds. Um, some of them are kind of going, going gangbusters on, on the site now, which is really exciting. So we took a look and said, why is this working? Why is this crowdfunding model um, that's so popular in, in arts and in creative media holding up really well in academics and science? And we noticed that these projects have three core components. Um, the project itself, the network that they're attached to, and the rewards that they're offering in exchange. And in conjunction, these are really what make this crowdfunding model tick. So these scientists have passion, and they're sharing this passion for what they're doing, why they're doing it, with not only their own communities, but with the world. And we're getting great feedback from them because some of them are saying, you know, you know, I, I never really had a chance to share my story before. I never really had a chance to tell the world what I was doing in a lab or what I was doing out in the field. And this platform is really great. And this concept is really great because I could kind of just tell people what the heck I'm doing for a, for a change. And they, they kind of get it. Um, and these are great projects that are captivating. They have a, a very high emotional impact. And they're just pulling folks in um, left and right. So uh, Christina is a bioarchaeologist. Um, she's one of the uh, few scholars that, that, that studies what she does. Um, and she's basically put a project together to, to, um, to follow the ancient Roman DNA. Um, she, she calls it, she looks, she's looking to follow the um, uh, Rome's ancient 99%. Um, so she's collecting skulls um, and, and, and taking DNA samples to find out where these folks came from, uh, what they're doing, really fascinating stuff. Um, when she put her project together, she was so articulate in what she was doing, why she was doing it, um, and it, that passion has really been uh, contagious. Uh, not only um, have, have a lot of the folks in the scientific community flocked to her project, but it's been featured um, in Forbes, um, CNN, uh, and other uh, big me news media outlets um, because the project itself is just making a dent in the universe. Um, but that's not the only thing that, that, that they're doing right. Um, they also have social capital, which you have to have in the world of crowdfunding. Um, that first degree network that jumps in to a project right from the get-go gives those social proof signals that, hey, this is a project that's worthy of people's attention. This is a project that is legitimate um, and exciting to an initial layer of folks. Um, and when done right, this, this momentum actually spills in to, to, new, to new networks and to new communities. Um, case in point here, we have Matthew. Um, and he is, if you take a look at that dolphin, um, you, could you could see that the dorsal fin um, is a little bit wonky. It's actually on backwards. Um, and that's perfectly normal for this breed of dolphin. Um, and he just wanted to find out why. Why is this dolphin's fin on backwards? Um, I'm actually a surfer, and I've seen a lot of dolphins, and I've never seen a dolphin like that. Uh, so I was actually pretty intrigued about this as well. Um, so he put together his project, talked about there's really no traditional funding to, 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 uh, to kind of follow um, you know, dolphins with weird dorsal fins, so he's looking to raise a small amount of seed money to kind of spend the summer uh, doing that. Um, so he reached out to his community. He reached out to, to folks that knew what he was doing and, and, um, and knew of his reputation within the scientific uh, world. And one of those folks writes for Scientific American. And they were very intrigued by what uh, he uh, is up to in terms of um, funding his research. And they gave him a really nice spread. Um, came out about a week and a half ago in Scientific American talking about Matthew um, and his, his passion for studying this rare breed of dolphin and finding funding in a whole new way that, that doesn't exist in traditional uh, methodology. Um, what's also really cool is these scientists are giving stuff back to people that are contributing to their projects. So it's, again, not a donation, it's not a charitable thing. 
It's a way to play with what they're doing and participate with science projects in a whole new way. Um, folks have different price points. They can kind of pick where they want to play in the campaign with these scientists. Um, and, and the idea here is that it's a fun participatory model that's sustainable and, and it's built around this relationship component as opposed to a, a financial transaction or a, you know, there's my money blindly and, and good luck and, and goodbye. It's really just kind of the beginning once you fund one of these projects. So um, here's another really interesting one. Marissa is a UK-based um, cancer researcher, and she is studying the effect of yeast cells on cancer cell division. And in exchange for financial contributions, she's offering um, really cool mosaics of some of the images that, uh, that she's capturing. And, um, she's offering the chance to actually be in kind of her digital footprint online. You could be kind of part of her web presence and um, even uh, you can even be on the paper itself. Um, for those of us that, uh, you know, don't have PhDs, we can, you know, kind of live, you know, through, through what they're doing and have our name somewhere floating around on papers. Um, what I also thought was really cool is she's offering for, for the rest of us that aren't scientists, um, the non-academic version of her paper. So if you want to read through this research that you're funding and find out what she's specifically doing on a grassroots um, level, you can kind of read through it and, and kind of you know, get the gist and get excited about what she's finding. So as a result, we're we found that since we launched this in November, November 1, so it's just been one month, um, we've had over 60 press and media pieces, um, including Forbes, um, including uh, CNN and, and uh, Scientific American and a slew of others. So we get about two to three a day, which is really, really cool. Um, thousands of people have contributed um, to these projects, um, and they're interested in, 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 and excited about um, the innovation that's happening um, on our platform. Um, new institutions and scientists are waiting in the wings to do more of this and to do bigger and, and, and better uh, uh, projects uh, built on the, on the foundation that this first wave is, is happening. Um, and we're just really, really excited about the future of this potentially better model, if you will, of funding science and academic in, in endeavors um, and supporting seed level, uh, seed level science projects that may not have a home uh, otherwise. So. Thank you all so much for, for, uh, for coming out.